Alright, it is 8 o'clock. Let's go. Let's go live. Go! Greetings, humans. Greetings. And welcome back to another fun filled episode of Barrier, 29 year veteran of the woods. And today, holy cow, people, it is, like the title suggests, smoking hot outside. Literally. Literally. I mean, uh,. uh Golly, it's probably 95 degrees outside right about, uh, right in the middle of summer for you good people. I know many people live up north, and it's like, ah, oh, finally, ah, uh, summer, I can finally walk outside without there being snow. Uh, here, it's like summer, oh my god, um, uh, get inside, AC, uh, have your, have your drinks right there next to you, be okay with it and everything, because man, oh man, a, a nice spring and early summer is actually uh, very decent. Beer actually got a whole lot done. Then all of a sudden, like the past week or so, just bang, like a like a bolt out of the blue, just hit you right there in the face. Like last night, it was like 85 degrees with 85% humidity. It was horrible. Horrible, people. Beer can't sleep like that. He wears fur. Well, he has fur. I, I, I really... Doesn't really matter one way or the other whether he wears it or not, but uh, there you go. It is very, very hot out there. Smoking hot. Uh, some people in New York City actually might be, yeah, it is smoke. From freaking Canada. Damn you, Canada. Blame, blame Canada out there. Uh, great to see Amy out here. Always great to have both of the Lesters out here for us. Uh, she says, oh, a Barbie movie. Uh, this one's for you, Amy. <laughs> uh, this is almost exactly the opposite of Rambo 3. Well, uh, we will do we will do Rambo 3 on Saturday. That will be our watch along there for Rambo 3. Uh, today, just kind of a, a little bit of a wide open show here. Bear had some had some stuff in the news, but let's go ahead let's go ahead and get right on into it because we've actually got actually got a good campaign update here for you good people. Get right to it. Uh, from Wraith of God, that would be, that would be Aaron, Angry Aaron. Let's let's bring up Angry Aaron Lopresti out here. We saw this the last time. Angry Aaron out there from, <laughs> I believe, uh, Grant Nolan. Grant Nolan actually, um, uh, in his book, uh, The Ghost of Metacuma Key. There he is, Angry Aaron. Uh, he's only only getting a stack of ten dollar bills. It's probably like forty bucks there that the other guy has there. It's like, I wanted more! Wanted more cash. Sorry, Aaron. You only get you only get about thirty bucks here. Ha ha. Uh, anywho, anywho. Uh, he says, uh, let's see, where is it here? Moving along, people. Moving along. Hey everyone. Hey Aaron. Uh, sorry for the delay on this latest update. I've been working. He has been working. Uh, first item of business, if uh, you want to order the Wraith of God, uh, number one, second printing. That takes a minute. Uh, through the Blood Hunters campaign, you can now do it. Uh, there is a perk that allows you to buy both of the books together. Very cool. A Wraith of God, excellent book. Probably the book of 2022 out there. Uh, there is also a secret perk ooh, uh, that allows you to buy the second print as an add-on with greatly reduced shipping charges. Very good. Uh, the uh, secret perk uh, should only be used by customers who already have existing orders uh, as the add-on only. Pardon me, as an add-on only. Uh, if you have not, I tell you people, all of the the bolding and unbolding just completely screws with Bear's reading here. Uh, if you have not uh, backed the campaign yet, what is your problem? Uh, and if you want the uh, copy of the second print, uh, please use the uh, perk. Uh, to get both your books. Or you can contact him directly uh, and get a copy of the second print right now, people. Uh, second item, he says, I'm only uh, 13 pages away from completing a Wraith of God Blood Hunters. Actually, that is... There we go, right there. <clears throat> uh, bah, bah, bah. I, I still expect to be finished uh, with the book sometime in August. Very cool. Uh, thank you all for your continued support of these exciting... Empire Comic, uh, Empire Comic, uh, projects. There you go. Very cool. There is, um, there is an angry, angry wolf. I believe this is the, I believe this is the first cover. Or, uh, 
second printing of the first the first campaign out there. So that is the that's the new cover. Poor Wraith in it, down but not quite out. Um, it was her name Esther. I think Esther uh, taking on taking on the wolves out there. Well, there you go. Pretty cool. Pretty good stuff from Aaron Lopresi. Good stuff out there. Um, but, but, but I'm not sure if Bear, uh, Bear did this uh, on the on the previous show or not. Let me find it here. Do, 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 do. But just in case if Bear didn't do it. Hey, right, here we go from uh, from your boy Zach. He says it's a late uh, June update. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, your boy. A runner has been fulfilled and is being received by backers. Actually, Bear, Bear can attest to that. Uh, it came in on was it Monday or Tuesday. I forget which day it was. Uh, Bear just opened it today, so I uh, just got that. Uh, Cuss uh, has been lettered in Jawbreakers Forever as being lettered next week. He says thanks, and that's from Richard. Oh, your boy Zach. Actually, hold on. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can pull that up here, people. One second. Bear, bear with bear here for just a moment. Let me see if I can find this. Do, 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 do. Hang on. Thing with the thing. Talk amongst. Talk amongst your shells, people. Let's see. Do the thing with the thing. Yeah, I hope it works. There we go. There's that. Let's see if it'll do it on OBS here. On the old OBS. All right, let's see. Do the thing with the thing. I want to add a window. Let's see if it'll bring it up. Okay. Do the thing with the thing. Um. There we go. There we are. Ah, shoot. I got to resize it, people. One second. One second here, people. There we go. There is a... There's a box open from there, so, uh, yeah, got, uh, it's, it's gonna look a little bit off for you people, we're doing it in HDR, so it's gonna look a little bit washed out, but, uh, there you go, there is, um, uh, Jawbreakers, got Jawbreakers, I, is that the third one? I believe that is the third one, if Bear remembers correctly, the, uh, Grand Bazaar, I think it's called Grand Bazaar, it's got a couple other stories in there as well, Nexus, I never got Nexus, so I got that one, I think there's another one as well. So we've got that. And also, let me get to it here. Where is it? There we go. There is Runner. Runner right there. In Bear's Claws. Ugh. Yes, indeed. We got that. Got that open today. Man, oh man, was it a hot one out there. Ooh-wee. I tell you, people. Let's see. Would it play? It'll play. I'm not sure if that's coming in. Don't know. Don't know, but there you go. Runner, uh, plus Jawbreakers, and a couple other books there. Good stuff. Thank you, you boy. Thank you so much. There we go. Let me get rid of that. So there is proof, people. There is proof. Hope to, hope to have that out, hopefully, in the next couple of days. You never know with old YouTube here how it tries to do um, HDR stuff. Uh, you, you, could, you could have it done in one day. You could have it done eh, three or four days. Eh, whatever they decide to make it. Come around and decide whatever they're doing there. So there we go. There is there is runner, uh, some good stuff there from uh, what they call a Narzac joints or Narwhal and uh, your boy Zach, your boy Zach out there, and also I believe this is called cuffs, cuffs out there with the guy, guy with the knives in his hands. So there you go. Pretty cool. Pretty pretty cool stuff there, people. All right, there we are. There there is that. Let me get back to it. I, I wasn't sure if we did that the last time. Wasn't wasn't too sure. Wasn't too sure. But you know what, people? Speaking speaking of the last time, you know what? Kind of a kind of a theme that we have here. Not not necessarily. You're gonna see what's going on, but uh, you want to see what's going uh, to go on. So actually, we kind of had a. A discussion of some of the James Gunn stuff, a, a Superman movie coming out. Basically, the roadmap ahead for Warner Brothers Discovery. You know, a, a Superman coming out supposedly 2025. Saying, okay, well, uh, James Gunn, he had to have his uh, script, had to have the script in uh, before the writer's strike. And it looks like, looks like people, they might actually pull the trigger. 
actually do a writer's, writer's strike out there. So Beer was saying, hey, you know, if they're, they're going to be doing all that, uh, he, he better go ahead and cast. Better go ahead and cast real quickly here before the writers go on strike. Uh, I think Friday, uh, the 30th out there. So, uh, sure enough, oh, Bear was like, uh, well, you know, they're probably going to be, um, uh, announcing here pretty soon, because they got to wrap up, uh, wrap up their actor and actress out here for, uh, Superman. Sure enough, look at here, last night, Bear, hashtag Bear was right, Bear was right, uh, from Variety and Matt Donnelly, uh, Superman Legacy cast David, David... Do you pronounce it corn sweat? And we'll go with corn sweat out here. Cor corn, corn sweat. And uh, Rachel Bo... I don't know. Whatever her name is. As a Clark Kent and Lois Lane. Um, uh, uh, or also Secretariat, maybe. Uh, maybe she could uh, also play the, the horse known as Secretariat. Why the long face, ma'am? Why... The long face. That is the face that you give when, uh, you know, you've kind of farted in the elevator, kind of turn around, and that's that's the face that you get right there. That is the face. Anyways, that is, that's your new Lois Lane, people. Oh, joy, oh, joy. There you go. I'll, uh, just real quickly here. Uh, DC Studios has knighted a new Clark Kent and Lois Lane. That would be David Cornsweats and uh, Rachel, Rachel, whatever the hell her last name is, uh, Bro Shnanahan? Snanahan, Braj Nanahan, Braj Nanahan, how do you, how do you pronounce it? Somebody help Bear out here, ah, oh, for crying out loud, ah, gosh darn it, uh, Rachel, blah, 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 ah, oh, for crying out loud, now it gives me the freaking, ah, I don't want this, no, stupid variety, all right, anyways, um, you got a new Superman, people, you got a new Superman out there, uh, Canada has arrived on Bear's channel, good to have P money here, good to have P money in the audience out here. Uh, anyways, uh, Bear, you know, we could go through the whole <sighs> freaking box office. Uh, we got coming up here, Harrison Ford doing his thing, yada, yada, yada. Folks over at Deadline, uh, they keep changing it up here. They'll do, uh, they'll do domestic, they'll do global, whatever makes it look good. I'm trying to say, oh, look, 140 plus million global. Uh, it's gonna be great, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Uh, probably not. Um, uh, they're looking probably at uh, the new the new Indiana Jones. Let me see if they, let me see how many days they count here. Yeah, okay. So Friday, Friday through Tuesday. So it is an extended five day frame. Friday, Friday through Tuesday, the Independence Day stretch, with the holiday falling on the last day. As a standard for July Fourth, movie going in the U.S. slows down due to what? No, it doesn't. What the hell? People go see, people go see movies on July 4th. See, this is the thing. They try to, oh, well, nobody's going to go watch Indiana Jones because it's July 4th and, you know, you got to go to do other things rather than go see a movie on July 4th. God forbid. Even on a Tuesday, which you'll have off. I mean, you can mow the lawn on Saturday. Crying out loud. Uh, anyways, uh, five days, five days there. They're trying to say uh, 60 to $65 million. Um, remember a little bit back towards the towards the flash? Say it all. It's going to make 125 domestic. They brought it down. Eh, maybe 75. And they brought it down. Eh, well, probably, probably 65 million. Ended up being uh, 55 million. Uh, so if 60 to 65 was a, a pretty bad bet there for the flash. 60 to 65 million dollars on uh, Indiana Jones. That's not looking, not looking very, very good out there. <clears throat> Let's see, P. Link says, uh, you mean Disney may have a movie that actually makes money? Uh, brr, uh, 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 we've got a number. Well, we'll go through it real quickly here and kind of come around to the, to the main point here. Got a whole bunch of um, uh, bounding into comic stuff. A film could lose upwards of $250 million. Needs to make a beer's herd anywhere between $750 and $950 million. Uh, so, uh, uh, no, no, Disney might... Uh, they'll probably have a really good opening weekend. Uh, let me go back to the... Go back to this one. They'll probably have a really good opening... Opening week? 
uh, one, one would say there, especially with it being overseas. Uh, excuse me, especially overseas over there. Probably do okay the first week. Not bad. Oh, shoot. Bear forgot to look up the um, Crystal Skull opening weekend. Uh, let's see. Do they have that in here? They might have it here. Hold on. Let's bear. Let's bear search here. Ah, here we go. Yes, indeed. Uh, $100 million uh, for a three, no, three day. $100 million, three day. Uh, we get a five day, and they're saying it's sixty million dollars. So, probably, probably not. I, I think Crystal Skull actually ended up making money, but um, it, it wasn't wasn't as much as the other ones were. But uh, yeah, again, you're you're basically taking off two days, and well, uh, forty forty five million dollar difference there. So, um, eh, eh. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Open to uh, two hundred and seventy-two million dollars worldwide. Uh, we are expecting less than half of that worldwide for the the new the new one out there. So um, eh, eh. So uh, I don't know. Is um is bounding into comics right here losing up to two hundred fifty? Probably, maybe. We'll we'll see. We we will see out here. Uh, you know, we've got we've got a number of this stuff here. Golly, there's so many stories. Bear could literally do each one of these stories. Would have taken up the entire show. Could it could easily, easily do that. But uh, you know what? Bear is doesn't wanna doesn't wanna bore the audience here. Crying out loud, people like, oh god, bear. Numbers, why bear? Numbers. Uh, we don't we don't need to go through everything here. Uh, who's this John F. Trent? Uh, just kind of a, let, let's just do the headlines and see where it kind of kind of adds up to. So let's see, we've got uh, another one for, this is all bounding into comics here. Uh, Disney looking to tap woman director uh, Sarah Pauly for a live action musical Bambi. Uh, musical? A musical? Wait, hold, I bear did not read that the first time. A musical Bambi. Oh, for crying out loud. Thought it was just going to be a live action Bambi. Um, so they, they just lost their shirts, and probably their pants. Well, mermaids don't wear pants. Uh, lost uh, their shirts, definitely, on uh, the Little Mermaid out there, so... Uh, Disney decides, hey, let's double down and do another live action, uh, featuring, uh, you know, a, a feminist director out there, yada yada, who cares, Bambi, blah blah blah. Uh, they, they've already ruined Bear's childhood, they're... they're Going for uh, ruining a bear's parents' childhood, or grandparents, I should say, out there, with Bambi remake, a remake, a remake. People, it, it, anybody says, you know, gosh, you know what we're missing? We're missing a Bambi live action remake. We we really need that, starring The Rock, probably. I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? Bambi, a Bambi remake out there. Uh, P. Mike says, uh, too many stories? Bear has to start doing daily shows. All oh, for crying out loud. No, no, Bear. Bear wouldn't have the time to do any of that. <laughs> uh, we had one this uh, from The Flash, uh, basically. Oh, yeah, hey, um, uh, yeah, the, the film looks terrible. Um, uh, they didn't spend enough money on The Flash. They need to spend another $200 million or whatever it was. Meh, yeah, whatever. Um, let's see, um, abounding into comics, uh, numerous Barbie actors uh, reportedly describe film as a feminist, a Mattel executive adamant, Bar Barbie, rather, is not a feminist movie. Uh, uh, uh hey, let's check this out, what does it have to say here, people? A, a new report claims the upcoming Barbie film, uh, directed by, uh, another kind of feminist, a director out there, I wouldn't say she's super feminist, but uh, Greta uh, Gerwig, and starring Margot Robbie, uh, is a feminist film. Uh, let's see, uh, Lena Dockerman, uh, known for getting called out for extreme political views by Superman himself, Dean Cain, uh, reportedly, uh, speaking of Superman out there, uh, recently reported numerous actors and actresses in um, a Barbie informed her the film is indeed a feminist movie. Uh, the, the CEO denies it. Of course, he would because he wants to sell sell little dolls out there to people. 
Uh, what does she say? She says something in here. Why do they have a... Ah! Crying out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Kate McKinnon, this lady here, yikes, uh, would then reveal the script uh, from the film as well. Uh, how, like, gender... Like, you know, gender roles deny people half their humanity. And, like... We need to be like ourselves, you know, and it's like a very powerful message, huh? When attempting to explain how she identifies a kin, uh, she says, uh, and so, like, I spot like a kin, you know, everyone's themselves, you know, you know, yikes, ay, 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 ay. Uh, anyways, they're, they're trying to be, uh, here we go, here's the money quote. Uh, we used to say we wanted things to be, uh, subversive. Uh, but now it's more about how it's surprising, question mark? Uh, there's so many things that are trying to be subversives these days, but very few things are actually surprising. Uh, Robbie added, uh, and we like, uh, uh, and we like, uh, the things that feel like a little left of center. Left of center, yeah. Something like Barbie, where the IP, the name itself, people immediately have an idea of, like, oh my god, Margie is playing Barbie. I know what that is, but our goal is to, like, whatever you're thinking, we're gonna give you something totally different, like, you know? Uh, the thing you didn't know you wanted. What the hell kind of word salad jibber jabber is going on? I mean, a lovely, lovely lady here, but, um, I, 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 I. Banged on the head maybe a couple times. I Beer doesn't know, for crying out loud. I, so, okay, Beer, Beer was minding his own business, watching the Guy Ferrari show, checking out whatever diners and drives that he's going to. We had the, we had the um, Barbie, the, the, the Barbie um, advertisement on there. It looked out fine. I mean, you know, trying to figure out, you know, okay, what, what does it, what does it mean to... You know, go from a girl to a woman or whatever. Bear doesn't know, doesn't care. It's not any of his business. It's not even a movie for him. By him. Any of that. But Bear's like, okay, well, what the... Who, who is this movie for? So at the very end, at the very end of the advertisement, go see Barbie. Out, out uh, soon. Rated. Rated, people. Rated. PG-13. Bear's like, well, wait, uh, 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 wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold, hold on here, hold on just one second, people. If it's rated PG-13, you know, Bear, Bear's not very familiar, Bear's not very familiar with age, you know, young girls, you know, get rid of the dolls and start picking up, you know, whatever, the makeup or whatever the hell they pick up, uh, you know, uh, shouldn't that be like a G, uh, shouldn't Barbie be a G-rated movie? Maybe a PG-rated movie? Like, why Why the heck, why the heck is it PG-13? It's coming out on July 1st, people. PG-13, like, what the, what the, who makes a PG-13 Barbie? Like, who, like, you know, like, who's gonna go see it? Like, I, 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 okay, maybe, maybe women that played with Barbies in the past, and they, oh, wow, hey, it's nostalgia bait, let's go check out the new Barbie film. Okay, terrific, that's fine, but, like, isn't the guy from, where was it, who was it, where was it, Hasbro? Uh, Mattel, Mattel out there. Uh, the whole point, the whole idea, the whole idea of the entire thing, the entire movie here, let me get to it here, let's see, let's see some beautiful, Margot Robbie while beer, ah, God, for crying out loud. Yikes, get it off of this lady. Yay, 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 yay. Crying out loud. Uh, uh, why? Why they would have... Why they would have that lady in there, I have no idea. Why they would make... Why they would make a PG-13 Barbie. Like, who, who is that for? Who, who's gonna go see a PG-13 Barbie? Uh, the whole idea is, right, to sell, like, Barbie toys, right? Uh, you, you, you go see the movie, you say, Oh, look, there's Barbie on the big screen! Mommy, Mommy, I want a new Barbie! And so Mommy has to go and go to the store and buy a new Barbie because, you know, they saw, you know, whatever, Kate McKinnon, so they gotta get the freak Barbie or whatever the hell is going on there. Like, okay, alright. But, like, 
they're not they're not taking they're not taking the little girls maybe they are but they're not supposed to take the little girls to pg-13 movies so like okay who, who are they selling that to and okay all right you want to make your barbie a feminist film all right fine whatever the hell beer doesn't care it's not for him doesn't matter doesn't doesn't change anything for beer out there okay but like your whole thing is subverting expectations your expectations of Barbie movie. Barbie goes in, has some issues, I don't know, with Ken, I suppose. I don't know, whatever. Loses her car, loses her house. Oh, we gotta f get it back. Okay, fine, we get it back. Da -da -da. The world's safe. Again, you know, cliffhanger or something for Barbie 2. Okay, great, terrific. And I'm sure, what, what who, who is doing Ken here? Um, uh, Brian Gosling. Brian Gosling. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, God, the, the terrible picture. Except for her. Except for her, um, uh, the, the rest of the costumes look great. It looks like a great costume. Uh, set design looks looks terrific and incredible and all that sort of stuff. And then they say, all right, we're going to make it a feminist film and subvert your expectations. It's like the expectations was a Barbie film. There, there's no, like, what, what, what else would we be expecting other than a freaking Barbie film, for crying out loud? I mean, Margot Robbie, great, terrific. She looks terrific. Bear has... No problems uh, sharing pictures with a hot-looking Margot Robbie out there. Uh, terrifically fine. Um, still trying to figure out what the hell... Who who a Barbie film is for. Who a Barbie film is for. Uh, Amy asks, so what is a Barbie movie about? Have no clue whatsoever. None whatsoever. Oh, good to see Grant here. Back from his walk. Back from his walk. <clears throat> uh, let's see, um... Uh, Barbie played by the girl who did Carly, uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, so Barbie is insane. That explains so much. No, I think I think the whole idea of the film... Again, Beer is not an expert on Barbie films. Uh, apparently they have different actresses playing different... You know, like there's a President Barbie, there's like a Dr. Barbie, there's like a... I don't know, a race car Barbie, whatever. There, there's like freak weirdo Barbie that's like uh, Kate McKinnon... Um, <laughs> Looks like the Barbie that, you know, the, 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 the older, younger brother got a hold of and, you know, set fire to the hair and, you know, took off the head and replaced it with the other doll or something like that. Uh, so they got different actresses in there doing the different uh, uh, parts of that. Uh, Margot Robbie uh, looks really good as Harley, at least in the first one, uh, looked really good as uh, Harley Quinn. I... I she looks the part in this. I mean, you could probably find some other actresses out there. I think, um, well, I, Beer's not going to go there. Uh, she looks fine. She looks fine with, with all that sort of stuff. Probably fit right in, do, do a really good job, but why, why would you make a, a feminist? I mean, it's fine. Okay, we're trying to, it, it seems like the plot, if Beer just goes based on the, uh, uh commercials out there, it seems like, uh, Barbie becomes, um, Barbie as the doll becomes self-aware, and she goes into the real world, uh, to discover, I don't know, herself, I suppose, you know, sort of, you know, who, who am I sort of, a uh, uh, situation there. Okay, that's an interesting take for a Barbie film, I suppose, um, but would you just want to go the traditional route? Just, hey, here's Barbie doing something in the Barbie universe. Go buy our toys. Uh, that's that's really all you need. You, you really don't need to add too much to it. And then you then you put it as a PG-13, so, okay, is there going to be... I mean, apparently there's going to be, you know, relationship stuff going on in there. Is there going to be, you know, uh, are we going to see Ken's butt... We're going to finally see Ken's butt. Not that Bear's going to go to Barbie to go see Ken's butt. I, I, why would they Why would they even put it as a PG-13? Other than, other than the audience isn't the audience that we all think it is. Uh, our audience expectations have been subverted. Uh, what if, what if we're not, what if we're not the audience after all? And I, I'm not speaking for Bear. I mean, just generally... The, the, quote, audience out there. Uh, maybe, maybe all the people out there, uh, maybe they're not the target audience for all this stuff. And that's, that's kind of where beer is uh, slightly coming from here. 
up with some of all this stuff. Let me get out of this real quick. Go back to the uh, lovely, lovely Margot Robbie out there. Lovely Margot Robbie, but um, uh, there we are. There we are. Um, I, uh, this was something. Well, let me get to the chat, and I'll kind of come back to this. Let me let me circle back around here. Let's see. Um. <clears throat> Uh, I, Amy says she couldn't tell from the word salad. There we go. There we are. Uh, Barbie life in the dream house uh, was pretty funny. I'll have to take your word on that, Amy. Uh, looks like they didn't make it for anyone but themselves. Grant Crosby, congratulations, sir and or ma'am. You are today's winner. You are today. In fact, I was actually going to, uh, uh to circle back to, uh, the show the last time. Actually... I think it was Grant that was asking, like, um, oh gosh, which which film were we talking about? Um, I, I forget if it was The Flash or if it was, um, it, it might have been another film Grant basically asked, or maybe it was somebody else, you know, uh, 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 uh who, who were they, who, who, oh, I remember, it was, it was Ezra Miller, it was like, like, um, you know, why do they keep trying to, uh, press Ezra Miller or just whatever whatever actor or actress out there. Why do they keep trying to press Ezra Miller onto the audience? And Bear basically says, well, y you're not the audience. You're not, and, and kind of left that hanging and probably should have uh, explained himself a little bit. So let me get to that, but let me do a couple of um, uh, chats here real quick. Uh, PG-13 uh, movies allow one F-bomb. I did not know that. Barbie's dropping the F-bomb. Holy cow, she might... <laughs> I wonder if Barbie is going to drop the N-word. I wonder if that would be it. Let's see, Amy says, um, Barbie in the Dream House. A uh, Barbie life in the Dream House was G-rated. Yeah, again, so okay, uh, you got a couple situations in there that might not, might not be, you know, the best for, you know, six, seven, eight-year-old girls or something like that. Okay, make it PG. You know, have the have the parents come along with them. That's fine. PG thirteen. <laughs> Who would do that? Who would do that? I, I think Grant is on the right path here. <laughs> uh, he says, "I never liked the live action Harley, uh, so never could figure out what was so great about Margot Robbie. Uh, it's her took us." Uh, P Money says, uh, "Ryan a uh, Gosling, Canadian actor. Gosh darn it, uh, playing a toy that doesn't." Uh, have all the male parts uh, wondering what that means. I think, I think we all know what that means. I think we all know. I think we all know out here. Uh, anyways, anyways. Uh, uh, who, who, let's just go back here. Um, oh shoot, I lost my Superman stuff. Uh, who, who was Indiana Jones for? Uh, who, who, who was, who was the Flash for? Uh, who was... Who the heck is a live-action musical band before, other than maybe musical fans? Uh, who is a PG-13 rated Barbie for? Um, I think the best way to describe this, uh, once again, us, the audience, uh, is not the main audience for uh, whichever film, except for maybe kind of smaller films out there. A uh, little bit more narrow focus. Some of the bigger ones out there, even one that's a giant IP that you're trying to sell. You're trying to sell freaking action figures. Well, I shouldn't say action figures. Uh, dolls. I don't know. Is Barbie a doll or an action figure? Right, let's go with a doll. Let's go with a doll. I don't think she has, like, a machine gun or anything. That, that's probably one of the extras that you gotta buy. <laughs> Bar uh, machine gun Barbie. <laughs> uh, who... Who the heck is this movie for? Probably. Uh, the best way to describe this, uh, kind of a, kind of an old school way, old school way of a little bit. Um, I, I don't know if many people are, uh, re maybe watch, uh, Bear was watching a movie a while back, talking, um, I had a kind of a house party and everything, so they invited people over to the house party and, oh, you know, drink some cocktails and all that stuff. Well, they started showing the, the, the old slideshow. I don't know if people remember slideshows and all that sort of stuff, but they would have it where they would have, you know, whoever the host was of, of the party or whatnot, they would come out and, oh, all right, let's check out the our, our vacation to Egypt or whatever, and they'd have the slideshow and, you know, okay, here's the pyramids, you know, click. You know, here we are at the Sphinx. Click. 
you know, here's another picture of the Sphinx, you know, click, you know, here we are, you know, in line for the, for the pyramids, you know, click, you know, and, and, and the host is, is showing the slideshow of where they went, you know, to Egypt or Greece or the Orient or wherever the hell they went to, like, who is the audience? You know, it's not... It's not the people in the audience that are watching the slideshow. It's like, okay, this is kind of kind of boring, you know. Okay, here's here's 150 pictures of Steve in front of the Sphinx or whatever. Okay, fine, fine. They're not the audience. They're not the audience. It's actually the people there that are doing the slideshow. So they can show everybody, hey, look. Look at me. I went to Egypt. I'm there, right there. Look at me, right there. Right in front of the Sphinx. Here's another picture of me in front of the Sphinx. Sphinx. Let me take a drink. Otherwise, it's going to come out quite different. Uh, the Sphinx out there. So, really, the audience here, as far as beer can tell, uh, you know, again, Indiana Jones, we're going to lose upward of $250 million. Um, uh, 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 we're going to make a, a Bambi remake. Live action remake. Your previous remake lost boatloads of money. Why would you? Why would you do? Why wouldn't you? Uh, 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 you know, again, like uh, uh, the Flash. Hey, you know, or or any Marvel movie out there. Hey, you know, we uh, we're on the wrong path here. Let's at least pull back just a little bit, identify what's going wrong, and 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 try to course correct. You would do that if you respected your audience, but they don't. You're not, they don't care. They don't care. Why, why isn't, why isn't Kathleen Kennedy gone after she, you know, completely nosedive all, all of Lucasfilm, uh, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, uh, 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 Willow, Willow. Um, God, am I forgetting something out there? There's probably another one as well. Uh, they're doing it because they just want to show everybody, hey, look. I spent nearly a billion dollars on Indiana Jones to show everybody how old he is. Okay, and that's it. That, that's that's the entire point. That's all that they're doing is just essentially shoving it into people's faces. Hey, look, we're a multinational corporation. We've got billions and billions of dollars. We're on the right side of the ESG and the DIE and all the other crap out there. Uh, we're, we're in it. It doesn't matter if the, the movie loses money or makes money. It doesn't matter if people can't go to our parks for months or years on time. Hey, we got the federal government here to bail us out. All this other stuff. So they don't, they don't care. That's, that's basically it. Probably the only... The only big movie where uh, the the the, the uh, producers or the directors or the actors or stars that actually care about their audience, I'd say probably the Mission Impossible movie. Um, I, I really can't think of any other big tentpole movie coming out where they basically respect their audience. Like Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle's coming out. The guy hates. <laughs> the guy hates everybody. I mean, literally is just there saying, you know, I, I'm Puerto Rican, and, you know, loud and proud. Only people I want to go see my movie are Puerto Ricans and Mexicans. That's it. It's like, okay, even if I like Blue Beetle, no, I don't care about you. It's like, okay, well, why would you do that? Because he can. That's why. That's why. So that's kind of the the theme of today's show here. Again, Bear could have went through each one of these is a, a long thing that we could have spent a whole bunch of time on. Blah, 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 blah. Indiana Jones, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Bambi, blah, 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 blah. Barbie, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? The Flash, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter because all these movies are made by people that hate their audience. So, again, this is kind of Bear's thought of not necessarily a sort of a, a, a political side of anything, but gosh, I mean, you, you have people like, you go down the list, John Malin, Uncle Lee, uh, uh, Shane Davis, uh, uh, even old poor Mike Miller out there. You know, everybody uh, that we kind of think of either inside or maybe outside of Comics Gate there, uh, they've all been um, uh, uh, what we'd call kind of cancel culture. People in major, large, multinational corporations trying to cut out somebody that they disagree with and basically 
make sure that they can't make a living uh, doing what they're doing. Um, they do that because they can. So the the response the response has been, oh well, uh, get woke, get woke, go broke. Well, you know, Indiana Jones, you're woke, so you're gonna go broke. Look, two hundred fifty million dollars. Ha ha ha. Well, it doesn't matter. We we've been talking about this since Star Wars. We've been talking about that since forever. Seems like forever there. Okay, well, they're they're losing money. They're going broke. Except for they're not really going broke. They keep putting out the same movie. So, the best way to do it, if you are being canceled by some large corporation out there, some person in a large corporation, the way to go about it is trust busting. We need to start making that a focus of, okay, you're going to come after me. The, the, the boycott isn't working. The boycott isn't working. The boycott is. Hey, go check out. We were just talking about that. Um, uh, 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 Ghost of Metacuba Key. Uh, Aaron Lepresti's book out there. All that sort of stuff. The boycott. Okay, great. Terrific. Uh, but you still need to still need to take a look at some of these corporations out there and say, Hey, uh, maybe, maybe we can spin off Lucasfilm. Maybe Lucasfilm on their own. You know, could they do really good? Maybe. Uh, could they fall flat on their face? Sure, they, they put out another Indiana Jones movie that loses $250 million. Well, there goes Lucasfilm. Poof. Goodbye. So maybe they would have a little bit more incentive there. But yeah, anyways, that's what I would say. I would say maybe a little bit more on the... Of course, you have to do that through <laughs> through a government action. So now you have, have the... You know, you're trying to fight... Should I say it? Should I say it? You two. Three, two, one. All right, so you've got basically, essentially, fascists in, in the corporate world, but you're going to have to use the government, which is controlled essentially by, you know, um, a Marxist, Leninist, eh, communist out there. So you got you got to have your freaking communist fight the Marxist. And, you know, we're all here in, in the center together, just getting squeezed. So, um, you know... Uh, the, the trust busting thing might not be the the quickest way to do it. You still gotta change the freaking fools up there in, in Washington, but uh, that might be the the long term uh, solution out there. Uh, the other way to do it is also um, you couldn't do it with Indiana Jones, but like you know your Superman or your Batman's or something like that, where some of the IPs are coming up. Uh, make sure uh, that the IP is basically uh, put into public domain. So. Disney or Warner Brothers or whoever can't hold on to a, you know, a hundred year old property and keep keep putting out crap just because. Oh well, we gotta keep the uh, we we gotta keep the um, uh, the copyright up. So um, there you go, there you are, people. There is the answer. I'm sorry, Bear didn't answer that last last time, Grant, but um, there is the very, 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 very long answer to uh, to what you have there. All right. Anyways, um, what was this? Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about this a little while back. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery on fixing the insulting uh, creator credits on HBO Max. HBO, I keep calling it HBO Max. Max. Just Max Max. They should, they should just call it Max Max. So even there, even there, <laughs> they, they don't respect, they don't respect the people that are making it. You know, look at the writer strike out there. Look at the upcoming... Uh, probably uh, actor strike. Uh, they insulted the people there. Uh, they, they came out with their great streaming plan, which nobody's going to because it's moving, uh, losing a whole bunch of money. But um, yeah, anyways, they 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 insulted even their own people there. Uh, essentially, they had it where at the end of the credits, it was just quote a creator. So it didn't matter if you were you know delivering coffee or if you were the the executive producer or the director, it was all just kind of a creator label. That's that, which is um, illegal. Uh, eh. It's against their uh, um, uh, uh, collective agreement that they have with the unions out there. So um, uh, not not good stuff out there. Not good stuff. All right, Beer is jabbering on here. Let's Let's take a look at what the chat has to say out here. Let me get back to it here. So anyways, yeah, it wasn't a, I beer didn't want to go on to a long Barbie rant there, but um, there you are. There you are. All right, uh, pardon me. Let me catch up on the chat here. <clears throat> catch up. 
Let's see, Grant says, it seems uh, kind of flat to me, like a lawyer's girlfriend. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it's a for their friend. Oh, there we go. There we go. Or as personal projects to pad careers. Uh, it's not a personal project when it's, you know, multiple, multiple, multiple millions of dollars. But although, I, you know, I, I, let's go with it. Let's go with that, Grant. I, uh, let's go with Grant's analysis here. Let's see, Amy says a PG-13 Barbie makes as much sense as a super violent Harley Quinn movie. Uh, most girls don't like violence. Most girls uh, who play with dolls shouldn't be watching PG-13 movies. Uh, who do they think is watching it? Gay men? Probably gay men. Uh, let's see, uh, Grant says, uh, right, uh, would you um, bring your daughter or young relative to see it? Uh, you, you know, again, it's like uh, probably the first weekend's going to do really well, and then they're going to find out what kind of movie it was. Uh, again, it seems like a little bit more of kind of a just a general, uh, you know, kind of uh, a finding yourself. You know, you, you're coming into you're you're, gr you're growing from a, a young girl to a woman, and you're you know coming into new and all sorts of different things. All, all everything's changing upstairs and downstairs and all that other stuff. I, that's fine. That's that's a that's a good sort of you know plot or theme to kind of hang your hat on. That's that's perfectly fine out there. I, again. I, the, the sort of pull quote, this is the pull, I, I wish I would have found the uh, commercial out there. One of the pull quotes, uh, Barbie is out there, Margot Robbie out there, Barbie's out there dancing along. The music stops, and she asks, asks one of the other, other you know, Barbie or other people out there, you know, uh, hey, uh, what do you think happens when you die? In a Barbie film. What do you think happens when you die? Uh, well, it depends on which religion you kind of ascribe yourself to, or if not, um, you know, just a, a really long dirt nap. But um, why is that in a Barbie film? Why is that in a commercial for a Barbie film? I mean, you're trying to get people to come to, come to see your Barbie film. Uh, hey, what happens when you die? Uh, from, um, you, you know, you, you, you go through, you know, either the, bar, uh, the, the the Bible out there, or maybe you're a big Nietzsche fan, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, what happens when you die, uh, uh, right up there with Barbie, you know, you, you've got, you know, you, you, you've got St. Peter or something like that, maybe you've got a, a, a philosopher, uh, something like that, or, or Barbie, you know, uh, gee, I wonder what Barbie thinks, what happens when we die. Hmm. Again, this is strange. Strange. Again, who who is that movie for? Who is who is Indiana Jones uh, dial of dial of nine one one because I've fallen and I can't get up? Uh, like, okay, Harrison Ford wanted to make a movie about an old Indiana Jones. Well, okay, that's great for you, but why not just make a? Here's what it's like for a. A, a you know a, a fellow a big time uh, getting older. Um, you don't need to you don't need to bring Indiana Jones into that. So very very strange very strange very very strange. All right, let me get back to it here. I slow on the chats here. Bear apologize. Let's see. Uh, Amy says uh, that's fine for friends uh, meeting up after vacation, uh, but the people. Uh, in the movie theaters are paying uh, to be there, so you better not break uh, out the slides. <laughs> uh, Bear was uh, again captive, captive audience again watching old, old TV shows and everything. So uh, uh, yeah, they they just had that there, and a little light went off on Bear's head there. Uh, probably a better way of describing it, but uh, yeah, there you go. Again, it's not usually as a creator. You know, you want to tell your story. Hey, I've got a uh, important theme or important concept that I want to talk about. Uh, make sure the wider world's aware of. But at the same time, you say, okay, what people are looking for, what they want, what they're going to go and pay money for, and, and cater towards that. So, you know, if you've got 
you know, if you've got your Charlie's Angels movie out there, uh, you know, you, you're gonna have a, a good section of women come to the Charlie's Angel movies, but you're also gonna have probably some some fellas out there coming to the Charlie's Angels. So you want to have a little bit of um. Uh, you know, you show a little bit of leg or something like that along there. You know, something for the fellas out there to, you know, go watch it. No, the latest Charlie's Angel movie was like a, a huge feminist, feminist sop out there, which is fine for like half of the audience if they want that. But for the other half, it was, it was a lecture. It was a lecture. And that's, that's how so many of these films are. So I, maybe instead of, maybe instead of a slideshow, a lecture, you're going to a lecture rather than a rather than being entertained. And it's like, you know, what are, what are these people expecting from us? Are they expecting us to come out of the movie theater and say, you know, you know, I had my long-held beliefs and religions, but after seeing the Barbie movie, I've changed everything. Everything about my life has gone by the wayside. I, I guess. I, I don't know. I have no, no idea. <clears throat> Have they done Fantasia as a live-action Disney film? Hmm. Uh, isn't that one locked away in the vault? Uh, I think that one's locked away in the vault, especially with, um, especially, what, was it, was it Mickey, Beer hasn't seen this in a long time, but, uh, is it the one where Mickey has the axe and he's cutting, what was it that he's trying to cut? It was like a candle, or it was something, and it kept splitting, Splitting and dividing and all this sort of stuff. That was kind of interesting part of Fantasia. That was pretty cool. Back, back when Disney know how to make films. Instead of these days when it's just slideshows and lectures. Slideshows and lectures. Uh, let's see, uh, Grant says, When I hear millions lost in relation to Disney, I think, big deal. Uh, that's a chunk change. Uh, that's actually pretty true. Uh, but they do need to bring in money from other spots, and they're not really, not really doing that very easy. Uh, Pink Mike says, yeah, Grant, I heard the number is 900 million lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, wait till uh, Ron Red Rum DeSantis gets done with it. Uh, closing out on a billion, says Grant, uh, that's uh, when I think I'll start possibly making a difference. No, not at all. I, look, they, they closed, they closed, um... Walt Disney World, for a little bit of time. They actually closed uh, the one in Shanghai for a long time. Uh, and also the one in California for quite a bit of time. What did they do? Uh, Sugar Daddy up there in Washington, D.C. Got their money. No big deal. So, hey, if it's part of the propaganda to basically kind of, you know... Uh, uh, beat down whether it whether it either is communist or, or fascistic propaganda whichever one you want to go with here uh, kind of beat down the rest of us in the middle here hey they're all for that they'll, they'll pay for that you want to come out with you know something pro pro American out there nope nope can't show that that is hate speech we're gonna have protesters have protesters in front of the movie theater we're gonna have protesters in front of the you know, uh, uh, shooting, we're, you know, we're going to have them out there. We're going to have them in front of the, the food trucks. We're going to have protesters everywhere out there. So, yeah, they, they shut down the views that they don't want and take a megaphone to the to the views that they want everybody else to, you know, be forced to. Forced to. You know, all this talk about diversity, it, it's like they want the same NPC, though. Want the same thought, the, the, the same talk. You know, must talk this way, not any different, beep, boop, beep, boop, that sort of deal. So, that's that's the way they do it. So, no, why, why the federal government wouldn't want them to go out of business? Because they're in the business of propaganda. They're doing really, really well. They're doing a great job. I mean, sure, some people are trying to figure out, hey, wait a minute, this water's starting to boil. It wasn't a... This isn't the sauna that I thought it was. This is actually a boiling pot, and I'm going to jump out. I mean, they got some people there, but not not as many as we need. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Grant says, I've been thinking about that, especially regarding to Disney and Windows. Uh, like Microsoft? I mean, I don't mind throwing Disney through a window. That's That would be good. Uh, wait, actor strike, uh, is this a possible thing happening? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, P-Money, you weren't, I don't think you were here at the very beginning. Um, oh, shoot, I, I X'd out of it. 
Uh, yeah, we were talking the last time, uh, last show, um, uh, basically Superman stuff. This is all, you know, um, you know, they got a writer strike coming up here on Friday. They probably better go ahead and announce, you know, who the, who the new Superman is. And sure enough, the, the next day or two days later or something like that, they announced the new Superman movie. So, uh, yeah, there probably, probably we will see how long it takes. Um, the last time something like that happens, the, the, the writers were on strike for a while. The actors went on strike for, I forget how long. And then the writer, or excuse me, the actors came to an agreement uh, with, with the studios, which basically uh, forced uh, forced the writers' hands. They actually had to accept more or less the same deal as the actors did. I, I'm not, not apples to apples here, but essentially the, the same deal. The same deal that was being offered um, uh, from the studios out there. So maybe something similar this time, something uh, they, they might take a couple couple weeks with the actor strike, come to an agreement, and then, oh, finally, uh, we, we finally settled everything with the writer strike. Let's go ahead and settle that out. Uh, rumor out there, uh, they might be doing some of this, uh, the studios, that is, uh, uh, not negotiating, because uh, they want to get rid of some people. You know, they got dead weight out there. Uh, we need to get rid of some of these... Um, uh, writers out here, so let's go ahead and uh, not agree to anything. Let them go on strike after about I forget I forget uh, what force majeure is after um, thirty days, maybe forty five days, maybe sixty days, something like that. Then they can say, ah, force majeure, we can cancel the contract. Uh, you are gone. We don't have to pay you anything. Uh, everything's um, uh, severed uh, when, when the uh, contract comes up, uh, when, whenever we renew the contract again, uh, you can come back to the table and uh, re-bargain with this, but, um, uh, right now, no thank you. No thank you. So that, that might be, that's a rumor out there. Bear doesn't know if it's for sure, but, uh, there you go. There, there you go. <clears throat> uh, Amy says, no one needs that in a Barbie movie. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, yeah, you could make a cool historical drama from the perspective of an elder archaeologist working with a university. Dr. Jones. Uh, they could have done, essentially, well, they couldn't have brought um, Shia LaBeouf back. Well, that would have been fun if they would have had Shia LaBeouf back. They, they could have basically done uh, Indiana Jones 3, with um, uh, Harrison Ford playing uh, the Sean Connery role and uh, had a new ac actor, not an actress, a, a new actor uh, come in and play the, the Harrison Ford role. They, they could have, you know, made, made a huge callback to probably one of the best. I'm going to say the best. Gosh darn it, Bear is stating it right now. Indiana Jones 3 is the best movie. I, gosh darn it, Bear is going to go even further. Bear's going to go even further now. Hold on, people. Hold on to your butts. Hold on to your butts. This is something that you're not going to hear many places. Here we go, people. Here we go. <clears throat> Indiana Jones, the first movie, the first Indiana Jones movie is a stupid movie for dumb people. That's right. Bear said it. Stupid movie. For dumb people. One of these days, we'll have to do, we will have to do a frame-by-frame -frame watch along. Beer will go into detail. While Indiana Jones is a dumb movie. And, and no, I'm not even including the stupid submarine thing where he lassoes on and rides the submarine to Creed or wherever they go. And that's part of it. Oh my god, that's a big part of it. No, no, no. It is, it's kind of a dumb movie. Let's be honest, that one's kind of dumb. Uh, the third one. The third one was the best. The third one was the best. That is a spicy take. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. It is. I, Bear could go... I, I could go another hour talking about how, how it is, but we won't. We won't do that. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> uh, Grant says, um, let's see. Uh, they see it like that. Uh, Tiki Watiti. Or whatever. That's always what Bear says. Uh, said something along the lines of, uh, "You'll like what we uh, what we tell you to like." Yes, indeed. And he is a protected class. Uh, Beer has said multiple times, "Tikiti Watiti is a racist," and I don't drop that lightly. It's not like, "Oh, let me let me let me make a spicy take here." Ha ha ha. No, uh, he is. He's 
on, on record. Um, I, I believe he's from New Zealand. I, I don't recall the, the sort of uh, native peoples there in, in New Zealand uh, there, but I think he's part of sort of that deal. And has a very big hatred for uh, uh, the native, or not native, but the, 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 uh, the English folk uh, that came over to New Zealand there. So there we go. There we go. <clears throat> Oh, uh, Grant says he says he meant uh, for Windows, the, the operating system, to be made open source. Uh, it's way past due. Way past due. Uh, especially since all, DOS was basically just kind of a reworked uh, IBM source code. Uh, Bill Gates, well, actually it wasn't even Bill Gates. It was, um, oh gosh, uh, 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 the, the other, uh, Paul Allen? Was it Paul Allen, or what was the what was the coder in there? The, the Steve Wozniak of um, of Microsoft there. Uh, anyways, they basically just uh, uh, took some stuff from IBM, reworked it, and sent it back to IBM. And says, "Hey, look here, it's better." And uh, and they bought that, and he's been living off that ever since. Ever ever since there. That's a whole other story. <clears throat> Amy says, Amy says here, uh, she would not give the Brandon regime enough credit to keep this house of cards up forever. Uh, be brave, everyone. Thank you, Amy. This is some good stuff here. Be brave, everyone. Keep America in your prayers and live on doing your best. Smiley face. It will all be okay in the end. I want to, how do I, how do I post this? Can I post this at the top? Let's see. I'm going to pin this message. There we go. There is Amy. I, this is the first time Bear's ever done that. So there you go, Amy. I believe that is the words of today here. Let's see. The only person I want to see return to Indiana Jones is Short Round. There we go. There we go. Didn't he have... Didn't he have... Didn't he... Wasn't he in another... He was in another movie. The, the actor, the, uh, not short round. Uh, the actor was in another movie uh, recently. Gosh, what was it? Um, gosh, I forget what it was there. Yeah, that would have been good. That would have been a great callback. They should have just made... Okay, you're going to make an elderly uh, Indian... Let me go back to it. Let me, let me hold on here, people. Get out of this. Oops. Get out of that. Let me find the Indian entrance. There we go. There is Indian entrance. Uh, yeah, they should have just done Indiana Jones as a giant callback if they're going to do it as the last movie. So don't have Harrison Ford breaking his hip yet again, you know, on set. Causes you several weeks of delay there. Uh, just have him as sort of the Sean Connery role as the elder statesman there, you know, cracking wise whenever a young uh, Indiana Jones apprentice there... Um, you know, is doing something stupid. It's like, oh, you know, kid, I've done that before, whatever. Shut up, Indiana, I can do it better. And then, you know, they fall on their face or whatever. That would have been really good. Uh, have Short Round come back. Sure, have, um, uh, they had, they had, um, not Margot Robbie, huh? <laughs> trying to think. Um, uh, 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 the, the actress from the first film. Uh, and, and, and uh, the, the the Crystal Skull movie. Um, uh, Karen Allen? Was it Karen Allen that did that? I can't remember. Anyways, I have her bring her back. Um, have, uh, what, was, what was her name? Uh, uh, Kate Patshaw? Maybe have them as a cat fight. I don't know, whatever. Uh, uh, bring back, but they can't bring back, um, can't bring back, uh, freaking Sean Connery there. Uh, uh, have them bring back, um, who can else they can bring back? Well, they brought they brought back uh, Reese Davis uh, for a minute. Um, uh, anyways, bring back some of the other people. It's kind of a good old fashioned callback. It's the last, uh, you know, the last one, whatever, whatever. Uh, uh, God, what could they what could they do? Uh, let's see, they did they did the um, they did the cup in the third one. See, they did all religious artifacts. They did, they did the Raiders of the Lost Ark in the first one. They did the Lost Ark in the first one. They did the, like, Indian, Pakistani, whatever, uh, 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 religious idol in the second one. Uh, the cup in the third one. Then they decided, you know what, let's forget all this religious stuff. Let's go with aliens. Oh, okay, all right. Let's go with time travel. Oh, uh, okay. Why? 
I, whatever. It should have should have been some religious artifact. Let's see what what could have been. Um, I don't know. Something along those lines. Indiana Jones has the great idea to do something. He's like, yeah, yeah, kid, you need to bring me along. He's like, no, old man, I want to bring you along. You know, it's a good. I mean, 1960s, you could have the good generational transition. You know, then you get Flea back there and her horse face, and it's like, oh, God, why? Go eat some oats, lady, for crying out loud. Anyways, that was their, that was their decision. They didn't ask Bear. They didn't ask anybody else. There you go. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Let me go back to it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. P-Mai says, I rarely get hurt by Bear, but today Bear has broken his heart. Broken his heart. Yep. Sorry. The first one. Not a, not a good one. Let, let, just, just one, one example. Let's do one example from the very first film. Okay. So the entire film, the entire, the, the entire film rests on Indiana Jones going out to go find the little uh, amulet, right? He, he, he's got to go find that. The, the, the bad Germans are out there. They're digging up in Egypt. They're going to find the, the, the Ark. They haven't quite found it. You know, they're, they're still searching. They haven't quite found it. They think the, the amulet has the key to everything. Indiana Jones got to go find it before the before the bad Germans do. Ah, so he goes on the adventure. He goes to freaking Himalayas or whatever and finds, finds what's-her-face there. And, you know, then the Japanese guy gets it, burns in his hands. But Indiana Jones gets it. And, All right, we're going to Egypt. I mean, never mind how they get into Egypt, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. They're there. Okay, so they're there. Indiana Jones, he's got it. But the, the bad Germans, they've already went into, you know, the, it's, it's like a city that's been covered over from Egypt way back when. You know, all the all the sands and everything have covered over everything. So they, they go and they find, they, they find the, what is it, like the map of the city that they have. You know, the bad Germans have already been there, so they're trying to, you know... Uh, They've made the recreation of the amulet there, so they're going to find it. And forget the light coming in from a thousand years ago and at the right time and yada, yada, yada. And, you know, might not be the right day or whatever. Uh, it, fine, 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 fine. Okay, it all, it, all, it all works. It all works. So Indiana Jones has the staff, and he puts it in the thing. And he's like, ah, oh, they put it in the wrong spot. It needed to be, you know, a meter higher, a meter shorter or whatever. And he puts it in there, and then the light comes in, and it comes in, and Comes through the hole, which is the hole's in the right place, but all right, whatever, forget about it, it's in the right place. Comes in and hits the amulet, and the amulet has a little, you know, a little crystal or whatever the hell in there. And beep, it goes down, and it, 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 like, you know, hits the spot, it, you know, X marks the spot right where they need to go dig. And it's like, okay, but they've got the entire map of the, the, the ancient Egyptian city there. The bad Germans thought that they had it. They put the, the, the fake amulet up there. They, they, you know, meter too tall or too short or whatever. They, they're, they're digging it in the wrong spot. They're digging over there. They need to be digging over here. Well, like, the whole the whole thing, like, the light comes down and hits. And it's the biggest freaking building in the entire freaking city. Like, wouldn't you go there first? Wouldn't you see the giant mound and, like, hmm, I don't know where that ark is, but let's try that mound first before we just start digging holes everywhere. Why am I not go there? And then they don't even notice them. And then where the hell do the snakes come from? Like, there aren't snakes just slithering around outside. Oh, no, they're all in the freaking temple there. And, uh, yeah, what are they even eating? I don't know what they're eating. They're going to eat Indiana Jones. I bet he's got his, got his kerosene there. And blah, blah. Anyways, I, Bear could go on. Bear could go on forever, but he's going to stop right there. The, the whole point of the movie. I, all they needed to do was just like, oh, well, let, let, let's just let's just dig the the biggest, the, the biggest building there. There we go. That's it. That was it. That was all they needed to do. All they needed. Okay. All right. So they get the ark. They they bring it to Germany, and the bad ger the bad head German there, he opens it up. You know he's gonna get all the. But it's like they're, they're, you, you got to be worthy. You got to be worthy to open it up. So well, you know the old you know Austrian painter opens it up. Well, he's not worthy. He's going to end up like everybody else in the film, right? At the very end. So wouldn't that have been a good... Wouldn't have Indiana Jones saved us a lot of, a lot of you know, heartache and everything if he would have just let it go? Let it go there to Germany and then the, you know, Austrian painter opens it up and he's like, ah! And he melts, his whole thing melts. That would have solved World War II right there. No, Indiana Jones 
Freaking greedy, man. Freaking greedy. And how the hell does he get off the... Uh, this is a whole... Uh, Bear could go on and on and on. On and on. <clears throat> on and on. It comes naturally for bears. We are heartbreakers out here. We are. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, thank you, Amy. Don't let uh, my wife see uh, see giving me such a big hug. <laughs> he needs it, though. He needs it. Whole world has been turned turned upside down. Whoops, that's not it. What am I doing here? Anyway, there is that. There is that. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> yes, Amy is the pin commenter. She's got that's a great comment. It's an excellent comment. Excellent. Uh, have the student in Indiana Jones who wrote the uh, I love you on her eyelids uh, show after all these years uh, she couldn't get it off. <laughs> Every time she closes her eyes. Or, or even if she winks at you. It's like, okay, I, I what? I, I what? Love? Love what? Oh, oh for crying out loud. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see. Um, I thought they were tattooed. That takes real dedication. That does. That's gotta hurt, too. Ow. Imagine getting your eyeballs. Getting tattooed. Ouch. Ouch. Alright, let's see. People. People. Bear knows. Bear knows his audience out here. Got one final thing here for you good people. It has been the question that many people have been asking. It is on the top of everybody's tongue out here. That is... <clears throat> oh, Amy. Oh, hold on. Uh, Amy says, uh, Oh, I hadn't thought of it, uh, but is the chasm and the snakes in reference to the uh, one of the books of the Exodus? Uh, it probably could be. I mean, with the whole... You know, the, the, the whole Ark of the Covenant and everything. But to, but again, where did the snakes come from? Where, where did they come from? I mean, they're supposedly coming in from the outside, but... Okay, wouldn't you see them on the ground somewhere? Like, okay, all right, all right, fine, fine, fine. Uh, they're all there. What are they eating? Like, okay, there's like tens of thousands of snakes down there. Like, what, what, what do they have to eat? Uh, anyways, these are questions that are too, that are too much for some people, including, including pee money out there. <coughs> Excuse me. But a more important question, people. A more important question. Where should you store ketchup? Heinz is finally settling the debate. That's right. Oh, John Kerry. It's time to catch up on the debate. Well, that is from the New York Post. And Andrea Diaz with the great buns. Do you keep your cat syrup in the pantry? On the counter or in the fridge. Uh, well, uh, Heinz has finally set the record straight on where the beloved condiment should be properly stored. Uh, keep the tomatoey sauce ripe and ready. Uh, just in time for the holiday summer season, ahead of the 4th of July's Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, the official Heinz UK Twitter. What? UK? <sighs> Uh, uh, posted for your information. Ketchup goes in the fridge, people. The fridge. Uh, fans flooded the comments with many asking uh, why the product is stored on shelves at the supermarket or at restaurants. Because it hasn't been opened up first. Uh, Heinz continued, or, or a restaurant, they you know, rotate them out pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, Heinz continued the debate by asking followers to vote on whether they keep their f uh, ketchup in the fridge or in the cupboard. Uh, the brand doubled down on the correct answer in the poll, writing, It has to be the fridge. But after analyzing the 2,500 plus votes, the answer were nearly split down the middle. Uh, there was only ever one correct answer, and we're happy to share it with the Heinz tomato ketchup lovers. Across the UK and the United States, we threw our tomato you know, ketchup into the river, sir. Uh, that our ketchup has to be in the fridge. Although we're aware many Heinz tomato ketchup fans have been storing your ketchup in the cupboard, how dare you? Uh, we do recommend refrigerating after opening. Like a normal human being. Or beer. 
Uh, this is the best way to maintain the delicious, tangy taste of our Heinz tomato ketchup that you know and you love, people. Uh, the Heinz UK Twitter account uh, had some fun being a uh, sour and sweet. By the way, what, what what kind of what kind of person goes around and like you know subscribes to Heinz <laughs> the Heinz Ketchup Twitter account? Like, like okay, yay! Look, I, I'm subscribed to the Twitter account of Heinz Ketchup. Uh, anyways, I had some fun being sweet and sour with their fans who felt passionately about the saucy debate. Uh, in response to the condiment uh, shortage con condiment continuum, a Twitter user Catalyst joked, not beside my pillow? Hmm? Uh, Heinz supported, uh, saying a second best place to keep it. So there you go. El Timitos! Ha ha ha! Ay ay ay. Is that... Wait a minute, hold on. Is that a maple leaf? From Canada? Ah, for crying out loud. We're coming from the UK and the Canada. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, when, twi when another Twitter user asked the question, everyone was wondering, so why is it on the shelves and at supermarket shops then? Because it hasn't been open, you moron. Uh, Heinz snapped back asking, where do you keep your soft drinks, Dave? I don't know. In a fridge. Uh, when another Twitter user insisted, never, ever has it gone in my fridge nor anybody else's, Heinz quipped, uh, it does and they do, case, fridge closed. Uh, finally, a few true ketchup connoisseurs joined the chat agreeing that the product needed to be refrigerated. Yes, indeed. Of course it does. After opening, is this controversial, asked a, a Twitter user out there. We started something, Heinz replied. Relishing the responses. It's been a wild, wild ride out there. Yes, indeed. Which I don't know because once again, once again, people, there is not ketchup that goes on hot dogs. I know that, it, that beer is just coming out with the spicy takes today. Listen, mustard, possibly onions, if you really want to, some relish or some chopped up uh, a pickle out there, that's fine. Uh, the people that the people that take it and like, okay, I'm going to add 12 other things to this. It's not a hot dog at that point. It's a sandwich. It's a sandwich uh, w with a hot dog somewhere in the middle, somewhere just hanging out. You you'll have to find it. You'll have to find it there. So there you go. There you go. The, uh, the spicy and hot take. Spicy and hot take for you good people. <clears throat> yes, indeed. There we are. There, there we are. <laughs> Grant asks, uh, in Canada, do you just open a window and put it on the windowsill? That's a good question. That is a very good question. Let's see. Amy asks, oh, where do you keep your ketchup? Hmm. Uh, in the fridge. In the fridge. But I only use it for... Only use it for french fries. Let's see. French fries... Uh, maybe cooking sometimes. Put a little ketchup in with some stuff and, and cook with it. But, um, yeah, not, not on a hamburger. Definitely not on a hot dog. Definitely not on a hot dog. Uh, and is it yellow and spelled mustard? <laughs> there you go. I put ketchup on mac and cheese, grilled sandwiches, a dried pork, eggs, celery, pea money. I don't know who you are anymore, sir. I don't know who you are. <clears throat> Amy is in agreement with Grant, not needing to keep it in the fridge. Just keep it outside. <laughs> Let's see, Pain says, uh, great point, Amy. Every winter we clean out the fridge for a few days and put the food in a sealed bin and put it into the backyard. Right where bear can get to it. Good job, P Money. Good job. <laughs> Grant says, you don't bag it and hang it from a branch. You're just inviting comics bears over for a smorgasbord. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. A hot dog is a sandwich no matter what's on it, says P-Money. Hmm. Huh. Huh. All right, we'll go with it. We we will go with it. Uh, you can take your ketchup 
uh, hot dogs and your Raiders of the Lost Ark and just have a big old time. <laughs> oh boy, we could we could have an entire show just talking about how silly, goofy uh, Indiana Jones the first movie is, and also ketchup. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yes, indeed. So they got the Ark, and they're going to put it onto a plane. Now, forget the point where they come out of, of where the Ark is hidden, right next to where the airport is, right next to where the airplane is. Let's put that off to the side. All right, it just hap- Movie magic, it just happens to be. Okay, there's the plane there. Uh, if you were a, if you wanted to transport a, a priceless artifact that was going to give you, you know, wealth and, you know, all this other great stuff, you're going to put it onto an airplane, right? You're going to put it onto an airplane. Uh, one would have met, okay, so the airplane that they have in there, it was a, a I'm going to guess maybe some sort of fighter. It, it wasn't a real airplane. They made it up. It's kind of like a flying wing. Interesting looking. They, they had the propellers, chopped up the guy. Spoiler alert. Okay, all right. It looked like a, a fighter. Maybe, maybe it was a, like a, a medium bomber of, of the age there. Okay, it's it's a bomber. Where are you putting the Ark? Like, like are you putting it... Okay, it, it, so we're going to put the Ark in the bomb bay. It's like it's a bomb bay. It's made to drop things. It's not made to carry things. I mean, it's made to carry things, but they're bombs, and they're not that heavy. But not, not, not for priceless artifacts. So why would, you, why would you fly a bomber to go and pick up a priceless artifact? I, where, where are you even going to put it? Where are you even going to put it? crying out loud. And, like, why would you even put it on an airplane? Like, why would you put it onto a boat? Or you, you had the submarine already there. Why not just put it onto the freaking submarine? It already took it anyways. Freaking ah, stupid. Anywho, any, anywho, we won't, we won't talk. About it. Are there snakes on the plane? I, who knows? There were snakes everywhere else. Snakes everywhere else. <clears throat> a Grant Nobin in the third movie had snakes on a train. Snakes on it. That's true. That is true. <laughs> Better get those gosh darn snarks. Others got darn plain. That's right. I'm on the truckers. <laughs> anywho, anywho, that is some the good news. The good news for today, people. Keep your keep your ketchup into the refrigerator, people. After you open it, but don't put it on two hot dogs. Not at all, people. Not, not at all. All right, people. Well, uh, uh, just as a reminder, just as a reminder, we're going to be doing a uh, Rambo 3. Rambo 3. Uh, watch along uh, coming up on Saturday. So hopefully, hopefully uh, some of you people might be around on the Saturday before July 4th. Going to do a patriotic Rambo 3 watch along. Hope to have everybody there with us. Uh, even if you don't like Rambo or don't really care. Come on by. Have some fun. We'll have some fun. Um, trying to do a couple different things. I don't know if we'll be able to... Uh, bear's in a little bit of a time crunch here. Bear will definitely do it, but um, we'll, we'll see if we can bring in uh, uh, some extra folks out there. But uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to uh, doing Rambo 3 uh, coming up on Saturday. So um, won't be the won't be the normal show out there doing a... Doing a watch along like we did. Uh, uh, eh, what did we do that back in March? Back in March was the second one. So uh, do doing another one here. It'll be fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff out there. Oh, well, you better be there on Saturday night, P Money. He says he might be able to hang out for a bit on Saturday night. Well, you better be there. By the way, uh, if you don't have, if you don't have uh, Rambo three. Uh, pretty cheap. Uh, there's seen it on, let's see, Amazon. Uh, uh, definitely on the, the Max, HBO Max, whatever they call it. Uh, there, downloaded it from Apple, so you can check it out there. Uh, it may be on YouTube. Uh, Bear would have to look, but um, uh, relatively cheap. Two, three, four bucks, something like that. It won't break the bank. It won't break the bank at all, so. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have some folks out there. 
and enjoying a good movie. Really good movie. We talked about all the crap movies that are out. Let's let's celebrate some good stuff out there. Like like Amy says. Like Amy says. Or you can rent it. Or you can rent it. There you go. Should should hopefully only be, you know, a dollar or two or something like that. I would say go ahead and buy it and enjoy it multiple, multiple times out there. Yes, indeed. All right, people. Well, you know what? All this talk, all of this talk about hot dogs, it's making Bear hungry. So he's going to head back into the woods. So until next time, people, grrrr.